What's up everyone? I'm back. I'm back from a mini hiatus of not doing videos, not doing vlogs, because this takes a long time. The video part doesn't really take that long. It's the editing takes a while and I've been busy with other things, so and that's why. So a couple things I have been working on and, and Ace has been working on. So we as CTS have been working on something special which we will hopefully be able to announce within the next week or so and and it's awesome if it goes through then it's gonna be great and it just has to do with the future of uh, the CTS family and this gym and, and where this business and company is gonna go so hopefully we'll keep you in the loop with that in the next week when you're busy sometimes other things in your life take a hit so for me personally, when I start to focus on my business a lot more, my training takes a hit. So my training, I won't be focused. I kind of just want to get in and get out, as was the case over the last week or two. Because my mind is somewhere else. I have other stuff to do. Training is not my top priority. But the answer is never to completely drop training out of your life or drop whatever it is that you were doing before in exchange for focus or time somewhere else. Because what happens is you end up taking a bunch of steps back in whatever you're doing. So in my case, if I were to just drop training to focus on business, which I wanted to, not that I wanted to, but I felt like I needed the time to spend on my business stuff because it felt like training was kind of a bump in the it was kind of like a halt in my train of thought so when you're in a train of thought and then all of a sudden it's like oh shit I have to work out two hours and then you have to get back into it. it's kind of a break which I didn't really want but I knew that if I dropped training out completely I was gonna lose um, a lot of the progress that I've made and I'll lose momentum and that's huge because momentum has to be built up just like your train of thought after coming out of training. It's like hard to get back into the mode of working. Going back to your training, it'll be hard to get back into training and eating properly and all those things. So I didn't want any of those bad habits to start. So what I do is I put it on maintenance. I just do the minimum amount of what I need to do in order to at least maintain my progress. Right, so that, that way when I come back, I haven't lost anything and I can just start over. I haven't lost any, I haven't built any bad habits. I haven't lost uh, strength, hopefully, in a lot of my movements. I haven't lost a bunch of muscle mass. I haven't put on a bunch of fat because that's all like pretty like demotivating. If, you're, if that was to happen, then you could set yourself back even farther. So this is a similar concept in training where you just focus on let's say I wanted to be strong but I also want to be fast and I also want to be lean and big and like everyone has all these training goals but you can't focus on all of them at the exact same time because you can't build them all to 100% at the same time you need your body needs to recover properly and you need to focus and certain goals compete with each other so in that case we put a lot of the goals that aren't the priority right now on maintenance and you focus on a few specific ones so let's say my goal was to gain a lot of muscle mass and get stronger those two go hand in hand so the more weight you gain or the more muscle mass you gain uh, your strength will go up it, they correlate but fat loss on the other hand doesn't really go hand in hand with strength because when you're training for fat loss, you have to be in a caloric deficit, so you're eating less, your weight goes down, that's not really a good environment for you to be strong. You're not as fed, you're not as recovered, so you won't be as strong as, as if you were eating a lot of food. So those two would be competing, so I would put fat loss on the back burner, I would put fat loss on maintenance, so my goal would be to gain uh, weight and gain strength, but not get too fat. So I'm not fully like throwing it out the window and being like, okay, I can get as fat as I want, but I'm putting on maintenance. That, that way when I decide to lose some fat, I'm in a better position. I haven't gained a bunch of fat and I can just 
uh, start from where I am, which is hopefully not too fat. So I do the same thing in my life with different aspects. So if I wanted to focus on business, which I have and which I'm going to uh, later this summer because stuff will get crazy and I have to build up a bunch of stuff, which is related to this thing I'm going to announce. Uh, so I'll put my training kind of on the back burner uh, if I have to. Ideally, I would want to continue my progress, which I've been able to because I just focus on going into the gym, doing exactly what I need to do to progress, and that's it. I don't beat myself up about missing a few exercises here and there, and same thing with my nutrition. Just do the, just do the basic things or the fundamental things that I need to progress, or at least maintain, and I'm good. That's one tip for you. Uh, focus on one goal, maybe two goals at a time. Uh, even better if they correlate together, like strength and gaining weight. Don't drop everything else. Put them on maintenance. Still do the minimum amount of work that you need to do in order to maintain because you don't want to go backwards in that. And that's how you make progress. You, you push some stuff up, maintain, then go back to those things that you're maintaining, push them up while maintaining the other stuff, and you just move the pieces along. You just move the pieces along together instead of dropping one moving up and then going back and then dropping this. It's like, you're just, you just be spinning your wheels, right? Training wise, my training has been good today, squat day. I'm gonna include a few clips. By the way, I heard a lot of you went out and bought some chicken because I put it in my last vlog. Good for you guys. Uh, hopefully it was good for you. Tastes great. I can't go back to grocery store chicken, but hopefully you are able to buy it and you taste the difference and it's not so important that you went out and bought like it's not important that you bought that chicken instead of grocery store chicken what is important is that you made a decision to go out and do it because of being healthy like otherwise you wouldn't go out and do it but it's also important that if it tastes good if it's better for you is it sustainable and is it going to allow you to adhere to your diet over time. So for me personally, I hate a chicken breast. I hate it. Like I love dark meat, but that chicken breast is bearable. Like it tastes good and I actually somewhat enjoy eating it. And it, and it helps me adhere to my diet and it helps me stay consistent over time. And that's the most important thing. So if it helps you guys, awesome. Uh, keep at it. Okay, so I'm going to take you through my squat workout today. This is one of the rare occasions where I actually videotaped every single, well not every single set, I actually missed one set, but out of the 12 sets of squats that I did on this day, I recorded 11 of them. So you can see me go through all of them. This is 180, uh, and I started with 6 sets of 8. So I'm gonna keep this weight for the first six sets. Eight reps each. Uh, let me also say that I do own other t-shirts that I work out in. Just so happens that every time I film a workout, I'm wearing this Superman t-shirt that I can't uh, get off when uh, I finish. But I, I do own other t-shirts. Maybe I'll make another vlog post uh, specifically wearing another t-shirt so you believe me. But uh, here we go. Squats felt good today. Um, usually it takes me a lot of warm-ups to get my legs warm. Today was a good day. Felt good. And it felt smooth. And what you'll notice is that every single set, uh, I set up the exact same way.
So if you see here, I set my grip first. And I put my head underneath, squeeze my shoulder blades together, create a nice cushion for my traps. And then that's where I set the bar. I step out the same way every time, step, step, take a deep breath, and then I squat. So what you wanna do is no matter what set it is, no matter how many sets you're doing, no matter what the weight is, you always wanna practice good technique. And your technique has to be the same all the time if you want to excel in the performance of your lifts. If your technique is different all the time, you're not really practicing, you're just going in and doing stuff. So I wanna recreate the same environment every single time, that way I know what I have to do body-wise in order for me to lift a certain weight. One of the, so squats are my absolute worst lift of the three. My bench is around two, I think I've benched 245 in the past. I had a body weight of about 150, 155. My deadlift is just under 405, but my squat has always been horrible. One, because I had squatting, like I had hip injuries, which didn't allow me to squat uh, for years, actually. I think before last year or the year before, I hadn't squatted uh, with consistency or with any sort of heavy weights for multiple years at least two or three years because of hip pain that I couldn't I couldn't get around but then I focused on fixing it and now I'm able to squat but the thing that brought up my squat the most uh, over the last year is just squatting more and sometimes that's just the case you, you if you want to get better at something you got to practice more often so I went from squatting maybe once a week to now I squat three times a week and my volume in my once a week squat workouts was probably let's say at max at max four sets of eight reps um, I was generally always squatting in the lower rep range to build strength but now I've I've taken a more high volume approach my training is largely sub maximal so not even close to failure but now I do three days of squats. On my first day, I do seven sets. On this day, which is my second day, in total I do 12 sets. And on my last day, where I deadlift first and I squat as a secondary exercise, I do another five sets. So I went from, I think that adds up to about 24 sets or something like that, 24, 25 sets. I'm not gonna do the math right now. But I went from four sets to 24 sets of squats in this one squat workout. So I've already moved, as you see here, uh, the weight down. So this is my six sets of 10 with uh, 170. In this squat workout, which I do every single week as my second day, I squat a total of, I think it's like 108 reps. 60 plus 48, 42, something like that. I'm actually gonna do the math right now. Yeah, 108 reps of squats on this day, whereas like it would have taken me over a month squatting the pre, like the way I used to in order to accumulate that volume. And volume is what builds muscle mass. It got me a lot of practice and now like this 170 for eight or the one or the 170 for 10 or the 180 for eight that I did. Now for six sets, I used to struggle with for even three sets of eight. It wouldn't have been possible. And now I'm, I'm doing it with, with ease for like six sets. So patience, consistency, but also learning to practice and just putting in the work is, is what got my squat to move the most. In general, in terms of my overall programming, my bench has also come up, my deadlift uh, has also come up, uh, maybe not to the same degree as my squat, 
but what I've learned after all these years of training and all the stuff that I learned, because as a coach, I have to learn a bunch of different training techniques. I wanted to learn all the fancy stuff, all the advanced stuff, but it's actually come full circle. And what I've learned is what works the best for me and probably for most people is like, as what I find when I train clients is the most basic programming is what works. So I, I've tried super advanced like periodization schemes where I change the reps and percentages and blah 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 and chains and bands and all sorts of special exercises and all sorts of fancy stuff that is really popular on like YouTube or or just is the trend at the moment but realistically what seems to work the best is actually keeping the pen simple and just staying consistent adhering to it and just working hard because you can have the best program in the world but if you can't stay consistent with it and if your motivation sucks to train with it it's not gonna work my programming is the simplest it's ever been right now and I've made the most progress I probably ever have in the past uh, few months to a year so that's a little lesson for you. After. It's not always the most advanced stuff that works. Sometimes you just have to have a direction, uh, stay consistent, put your head down and work. I think this is the last set of 10. And my six sets of 10 with 170. I've been actually happy with like not like the jegging my ability to up my training density so i haven't been having to take as much rest in between my squat sets which is good i'm recovering faster here's some rdls stiff leg deadlifts mostly looks like an rdl but um with a relatively light weight it's just 185 so i did two sets of eight on this day i find that because I'm starting a low bar squat, and that's usually how I squat. A low bar squat puts a little bit more stress on my low back. So once I get to the deadlifts, my low back is really what's limiting me. It's kind of fried, uh, so I don't use the same amount of weight on my deadlifts as I could have if my back wasn't so fatigued. And I haven't been doing my deadlifts lately, so uh, feel a little bit deconditioned on this, but uh, I'll start to bring it up as, along with my sumo deadlifts on my third lower body day. <laughs> 